What's good YouTube? It's your boy Young H back and I'm back with another video. This video is going to be over one of the biggest topics of the year and I've been holding off for a while because I wanted to make sure that I had all of my facts straight before I made this video. In this video, I'm going to be going over everything that pertains to your HVAC system and how you can protect yourself during the pandemic. I'm going to be going over your filters. What kind of filters should you get? When should you change those filters? UV lights. Should you get a UV light? Are you being scammed? Do UV lights even work? So make sure you watch this video to the very end to find out whether or not you'll protect it. All right, so let's run through the basics of how your system works in the first place. And I'm sorry if you hear any background noise. I'm in the lab because I was really trying to set the mood, if you know what I mean. All right, so I'm gonna dumb this down as much as I can because I don't wanna confuse anyone out there who's watching it who doesn't know anything about their HVAC system. So you have two sides of your air handler. So your air handler is where the air is being pulled through one side and blown out of the opposite side. And that's pretty much all you need to know about that. Because once again, this is not a lesson. So we have where the air is being pulled in, that's gonna be your return. Most of your returns, if you live in a house of some sort, it's gonna be in the roof. It's where you change your filter at. This is going to be the return vent or your return. If you live in a house, one story or two story, depending on where your unit is, it may be right on the ceiling one large grill on your ceiling. And I'm gonna put a picture right above so that you can see what I'm talking about. But this is where you change your filter at in the house. Or if you're in an apartment, you may have a pancake style unit where it's still in the ceiling and it's a very small grill there. Uh, I'm gonna leave a picture of that also. And lastly, your unit may be in your garage where you have a filter tray. I'm gonna also put a picture right here so you know where I'm talking about. But like I said, this isn't a lesson. I'm just letting you know about where the air is being pulled into your unit. This is called the return, return air. All right, now where the air is being blown out, that's going to be the supply air. So pretty much your vents and all that good stuff. Wherever the air is blowing out on you, warming you up or cooling you down, that's going to be your supply. So what's happening is air is being pulled through your return and you should have a filter there. So most of us, if we're changing our filters, you're already doing the right thing. I know a lot of us, we aren't changing our filters. You could be putting yourself in danger or killing your system at home. So the first thing I want you to do is just find where your return is and just look at it. If it's dirty, you're doing something wrong. If it's not even there, you're definitely doing something wrong. All right, so that was the basic that I wanted you to know about your HVAC system so that everything that I'm about to discuss just clicks in your head, it's just a little bit more fluid. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna go over is your filter. They have a ton of different ratings and don't get too hung up on the size of your filter because just because it looks like a thicker filter, it may not have the same protection. What we wanna be looking at is the MERV rating. So MERV, I'm not gonna get into too many details, but that's pretty much the rating at which your filter is efficient. So the most popular ratings that you're gonna see is MERV 8 all the way through MERV 14 but it does go higher. So there's a certain size of the particles in the air and your MERV rating lets you know whether or not your filters are gonna be effective at stopping those particles. In order to know if your filters are actually working, you need to know the size of the particles in COVID-19. The size is gonna be 0.1 micrometers. So you need to know whether or not your filter is going to trap or catch any of those if they're airborne and being pulled through your return vent. All right, so let me show you where you can find your MERV rating on your filter. I have a large filter here, and then I have a slimmer filter here, but they're both the same MERV rating, which means they both will catch molecules of the same size. But where you'll find that is, I'll show you right here. Let me put that in the camera. You wanna inspect your filter to find out what the MERV rating is or how much this filter is gonna be protecting me because we want as high of a MERV rating as we can get to prevent us from spreading COVID-19. So on this filter, it says it has a MERV 8. What does that mean, MERV 8? 
I'm gonna put all of the MERV ratings on the screen in a couple seconds so that you can see whether or not your filters are effective or if molecules from COVID-19 can just pass right through it. So when it comes to the molecules, there's heavier molecules, which we are advised to say six feet apart because by the time I cough, six feet away, the heavier molecules will end up falling to the ground which is why we should be six feet away. But what about the lighter molecules? These, they stay floating in the air. They stay floating, they stay floating. They can stay in the air for three minutes or longer. That's more than enough time for it to be pulled through your return vent and blown right back into your house. So go ahead and check your filter and make sure that you're protected. I would recommend a MERV 14 or higher filter. These filters may cost a little bit more, but it's a great way to make sure that you aren't spreading COVID-19. So it's kind of funny because when you think about it, if I cough near a vent and I have COVID-19 and the molecules are light enough, maybe it can go through that system. And as we all know, that air blows all throughout our house. So there's no telling whether or not someone in your house could be spreading it to others, even though you're advised to quarantine in one room. So if you look at your filter and it's not there or it's dirty or it's a really lower MERV rating, then you might wanna go ahead and change that. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. We're on our way to 5,000 subscribers, so I need everyone's help. Make sure you hit that notification bell too so that you know when new videos are dropping. I've been dropping videos a lot lately and if you want them to keep coming, I'm gonna need you guys to show a little bit more love. So it's your boy Young HVAC and let's get back to the video. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is when should you change your filters? So those of you out there who normally change your filters or you regularly change your filters, you're fine. Keep changing it in that amount of time. For those of you who don't change your filters at all, you should be changing it every one to three months. It all depends on your system, your house, how dirty it is. But you can look at that filter and tell whether or not it needs to be changed. So if you're already changing your filter, keep changing it at that rate to keep yourself protected. Um, I have read that when changing your filters, if there are any COVID molecules on the filter, go ahead, spray it down before you take it out. Uh, that's just an extra protocol that you can follow in order to stay safe out here. All right, once again, I'm gonna go over the size of the molecules in COVID-19. So they are 0.1 micrometers. What this means is that if you have a MERV 13 filter, it's only 85% effective at stopping those molecules from passing through. If you have a MERV 14 or higher, you have a 90% chance of preventing those molecules from going through. Lastly, if you have a HEPA filter, so I know a lot of you may already be excited from the announcement that Elon Musk might be making his own residential HVAC systems along with HEPA filters. So if you have a HEPA filter, you're gonna be stopping 99% of those particles. So that's awesome. If you have a HEPA filter, that's great. If you don't, you might wanna look into it. The last thing I'm gonna talk about and this is something that's been going crazy ever since the pandemic first started, and this is UV lights. There's a ton of different names for it. You may hear them called germicidal lights or so many different names that they call them in order to brand them. There are a lot of third-party brands out there, and some of them are trash, honestly. Some of them are really good. So UV lights, if you don't know what that stands for, it's just ultraviolet light. UV lights have been around for quite a while now, but they've never been used to really disinfect the air. They've been used to keep your coil clean. So I'm gonna put a picture right here so you can see how UV lights were typically used inside of your evaporator coil inside of your unit to prevent any kind of growth from growing inside of there. So as far as UV lights go on SARS-CoV-2, which is a different strain of COVID. UV lights have been tested on coronavirus before, but this was in 2007. So there's no real uh, accuracy on how well it'll work nowadays. It was tested in 2007 that the sensitivity of the molecules were actually being disinfected by UV lights, which made it a great candidate at the time. And while UV lights are great for keeping your coil nice and clean and disinfected, so that no growth is there, they had to put these UV lights everywhere. So I'm gonna put a picture of pretty much how much UV lights you would need in order for it to be effective. This way you know that 
If someone's offering you one UV light, there's no way that it's going to be able to protect you. So when installed right, a typical pass of molecules, it was found that the UV light was 85% effective, which is the same as having a good filter. So maybe if you put that combination together, a nice MERV rating filter along with some pretty good UV lights, maybe you might be in business. But once again, there are a lot of products being floated around in the HVAC world. So watch your back because if your system doesn't look like Star Wars on the inside. Then it's probably not protecting you. There's just no way that one tiny UV light is going to protect you when the air is being pulled past at NASCAR speed. So watch out for anybody trying to sell you a UV light that's ineffective. Another thing that you want to watch out is that some of these UV lights, they produce something called ozone. Pretty much you can think of ozone as smog. So when you go to the DMV to get your car tested for smog, pretty much think of that as, as ozone. Um, so it's very unhealthy. It is used in some places, but um, inside of your house or your apartment, it's such a small space that it can really irritate your airways and cause further problems. So make sure you watch out for those UV lights that create ozone and they'll sell it to you and let you know that it creates ozone but most people don't know what ozone is, so they'll just end up buying it. So watch out for that. All right, so this wasn't supposed to be a long video. Um, I hope you guys got everything that you needed to know about coronavirus and how it relates to your HVAC system through this video. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Young HVAC, and today has been a great day. Thank you.